I'll try to do a better job this time. So hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins Infra meeting. Um, the purpose of this meeting, uh, I mean, the number of topics that we want to discuss is pretty low. Um, so basically, the main, the main thing that I've been working on and with other people on the Infra side was to migrate um, Jenkins agents that are running on Azure to Amazon. And we are facing few limits, few limitations, few I mean, different behaviors, uh, and so I would just try to to, to to mention all of them. So basically, one of, one of the things that we did was um, to create a Pekari image for um, Windows and Linux machines. So there is a GitHub repository called Jenkins Infra slash Packer um, dash images. Um, so basically, the, the Ubuntu machine seems to be working kind of well, um, which is definitely not the case for the Ubuntu, for the Windows machine. Um, for the, just to come back to the Ubuntu, uh, an error that we are getting right now that, are, that is not really clear is that after a while, um, the connection timeout and the node is disconnected. I mean, per, con consider as um, disconnected. Even if the node is working well, um, no display issues, the connection is fine. Um, no, yeah, Every, everything seems to be working fine. And if we go back to Jenkins and just click relaunch the agent and it's working again for a few hours until it's kind of disconnected. So that's one of the things that we are investigating. There is a Jira issues related to this. So I will just add it to the, to the notes. So if you are interested to follow um, what's happening there. Um, on, on the VA? Yes. I, I realize you're you're doing project things, but I was worried first. Should we first discuss the outage over the weekend? I, I'm I'm I was more concerned about the ci.jenkins.io outage specifically, uh, or or will you get there eventually? Is that on the agenda already? So um, I was I was getting there, but we can okay, just, great. Yes, we can get so, there. No, so long as we get so there, not, that's great. Oh yeah, yeah, but you're right. Maybe you can just bring the context um, of what's happening on ci.jenkins.io. So just everything is kind of related to the work that we're doing with Amazon. So because we are, we provision um, instances for Amazon, we also reduce the number of machines that we provision on Azure. So that's one of the things. And because we reduce the amount of machine that we can provision on CI, the Jenkins.io, we end up in a situation this weekend where we had no new nodes because Ubuntu machines were broken and we not we did not provision Azure instances. Um, so that's that's one of the issue. The second issue is something that we investigate with Mark um, this afternoon. I mean this morning for him. Um, but um, basically, what happened is. For some reason, um, now when we try to deploy a new machine on the Azure account, it also provision a public IP. It also create an attached and public IP, and the limit of those public IPs is very low. It's 20 public IPs uh, across the region, um, including CI, Jenkins, that I use, or the CI, and all the other machine. And so, for some reason, we did not have enough. Um, public IP, so we were not able to provision new Windows machine, Ubuntu machine, and so it was kind of also related to the to the outage that we had um, over the weekends. Um, so basically what we did um, to fix it, um, we first asked Azure to increase the limit, even if I do not understand why we were affected today and we were not affected in the past, because we've been using uh, Azure for, for years now, and um, we, we never we never had these issues in the past, so I don't know what changed. So maybe it's related uh, to the fact uh, we changed to Azure account type. But yeah, right now I, I'm I'm not sure. Um, so basically, what we did we did two things. We asked Azure to increase the limits of public IPs that we could use, and at the same time we updated the configuration to not use public IPs but just uh, use private IPs. But for that, we had to provision agents in a specific virtual network with specific security groups and so on. So right now, um, Windows agents are working. So at least it's working for now, but the final goal is still to, to use Amazon infrastructure instead of Azure. So well, right now, we just have a fallback in case something is wrong with Amazon, and then we can go back um, focusing on Amazon. Any question with the Azure parts? 
So Oleg asked a, asked a question in chat if it's time to switch to IPv6. And I think that's uh, a... No, no, no. Yeah, it no. was a question a joke. Uh, okay. when, when, when configuration change at a time. And yeah. But, um, and so now to, to switch back to Amazon, we have, we have issues with Ubuntu and Amazon uh, and Windows machines. So as I was saying, for the, for the Ubuntu machines, are, um, MI are automated. So they're, I mean, MI are automated with Packer. Those Packer image are, uh, those MI are published. Um, um, sorry, so we can provision machine, we can use those machines, it's just that af after a while the, the agent is disconnected for some reason, mm -hmm. does not uh, reconnect back to the master, and so either we delete the machine or we just uh, click on a button to, to, to just reattach the agent, but this is something that um, we are currently investigating, and if like, you have some time to help with that, that would be nice, um, because yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a behavior that I'm not sure to understand there. And regarding uh, Windows, um, and regarding Windows, it's a little bit trickier because we created um, an EMI for Windows with all the things that we need, Docker, Java, and so on. But there, what's happening is, for some reason, um, Jenkins starts to use uh, a password to authenticate on the machine, and that authentication does not work. Um, and so we are still investigating with Alex uh, to see what's the root cause there. Um, but normally, we create a security group with a, with a right port open. So it's either an issue with the way we built the, the Packer MI, or yeah, this is still uh, ongoing, basically. So, and it looks like, I just checked, and it looks like there's a minor configuration issue on the Windows images. The tests are passing now that we're failing over the weekend, so I'm delighted at that. That's really great. It looks like there's a minor configuration issue that Git LFS is not installed, but command line Git is. I'll work with Alex Earl on that one. These are the Azure images, so I probably will also adapt the tests that depend on Git LFS to not depend on Git LFS. So, so if you're if you're thanks. spending some time with that, it would be nice maybe to open a Jira ticket so we can try this work. Um, do. The second thing is uh, it should be pretty straightforward to fix. Um, if it's for the Azure images, there are some um, there is an init script that you can update here. So it's probably just install Git LFS there. Um, I just okay. put the link uh, of the file in the chat. Perfect. Yeah, it just so, somehow or other, Git is there, but Git LFS is not, and I've just got to work with with Alex. I, it's it's usually a part of Windows of command line Windows on Git. Or yeah, so it's command probably line just Git for Windows. It's probably the script that needs to be updated. Um, right. There is just one thing that I, that I forgot to mention. Uh, last week we discussed about having Harm sixty five architecture uh, on the Amazon, and so I also created an image for it. So if we use the label Harm sixty four, um, we can start testing whatever we need to test on that specific architecture. Um, I still have to write um, a blog post or at least send an email with more information with the different issues and how we solve them. Um, but yeah, it's hard to stay focused in the current uh, period, with the current actuality. Um, I wanted to mention something else. Uh, for Harm 64, Harm 64. Well, now, any, qu any other question on, on Seattle Jenkins.io? So yeah, there's something that I want to say. The reason why we're first focusing on agents and we are not planning to move the master is because we don't have any repository with some platform to configure the Amazon account. So this means that all modification right now happens manually. So this is me doing that in the Amazon accounts. And so I do that would like to take some time to, um, to bootstrap a project similar to Jenkins Express slash Azure where we can automate um, the configuration of the Amazon accounts. Um, and so right now, we don't have a lot of configuration. It's mainly, uh, I created the credential for provisioning EC2 instances. So we use that credential from Seattle Jenkins that I I created the right policy. So that credential only have access to the specific region and so on. Um, but when I have more time, it would be nice to, uh, for example, maybe work on uh, provision a Kubernetes cluster, work uh, with Fargate or whatever. I mean, 
really use um, the, Amazon, uh, the Amazon account more than what just provision EC2 instances. But uh, as I was saying, each um, step at a time. And so first focus is to have Windows machine and Windows machine working reliably um, on, on, on Amazon. Any other question? Nope. Um, yep. The last, the last part that I wanted to mention is that I, I'm planning to take some uh, weeks off during the next summer. So if you have any work, pending work, uh, depending on me, um, that's probably the right time to, to plan it to see how we can do some knowledge transfer or whatever. Even if, even if, even if I'll be available, um, I'm not planning. I mean, I'm planning to stay out of my computer during the next summer. So, yeah. Yeah, it would be great if uh, you could uh, ensure that by the time you go off, uh, we as an infrastructure team can help with basically everything. So that uh, we don't have um, uh, one person bus factor, well, or lottery factor, whatever you prefer. Uh, but uh, yeah, it would be helpful for everyone. So basically, yeah, the, the way I see it is that if you're interested by a specific part, um, that's probably the right time to ask more permission. So um, maybe ask mm -hmm. the, to have the, 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 the knowledge uh, to work on that specific area. Um, obviously, depending on what you are interested, um, if you want to help with a specific, I mean, let's say that you need specific credentials or whatever. Um, We'll have to because I mean we have to decide if we trust you enough to to give you the right permission or if there is enough people working on this. I mean it's difficult to say, but while we try to be as transparent as possible, we cannot. Um, I cannot give root access to the machine to the first person who asks. Yeah. So that's perfectly so, fine. So the idea is yes. really like if you already work on a specific area, whatever, um, maybe that's the right, right time to to move to the next step. Yeah, for me, the main question there is the area where we have no contributors at the moment. So, for example, for me, it's less of a problem whether I'm interested or not in a particular area. It's a rather a problem uh, what to do if something goes wrong there. And uh, for me, reaching out to you would be a last resort. And before that, uh, if we have a list of these gaps or whatever, probably we could spend some time towards the summer to reduce the number of them. So we don't disturb you. Okay. So this is something, I mean, we still have the time before summer, but I just want to bring this mm -hmm. to in a, enough in advance so we can mm -hmm. keep this in mind. Yeah. So, so I ha was having a conversation with somebody not long ago about the Datadog monitoring that we're doing and just saw an email yesterday that highlighted that it had the Datadog had in fact detected the outage uh, that we had over the weekend. I just didn't look at it and didn't see it. So I was really delighted. It has a monitor already for some of the things we were having failures on over the weekend. This, mm -hmm. Thus reminding me, I've got lots still to learn about infra. So, yeah. so, so to be clear, the, the errors that was reported by Datadog is the size of the the, um, the build queue, the job queue. And this was a check that I put in place, like something in, in September or something like that. It's just a way to know if um, something is wrong. So I think like if we have more than 100 items in the job queue, it means that something is wrong somewhere. Um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, would it be possible to create a list of errors uh, where there is no other contributors who could help uh, at the moment? The thing is, it's difficult to say because we already have a runbook. Um, so if something, so something that I was thinking maybe I can improve is um, inside the inside the alert, inside the error that that is written by by Datadog is directly a link to the right runbook. Um, but we also have um, issues that are not necessarily easily document and that it's not necessarily easy to document so for example we had an issues um, over the weekend about a jira um so basically jira run out of disk space and so we just had to ssh on the machine but because that machine does not have a lot of disk space um the R is uh, sometimes different. So, for example, last Friday I cleaned up some old logs that were not useful. This Monday, 
Um, I just deleted all Docker images uh, and stuff, stuff like that. So it's more like there are, there are bugs, there are errors that we can easily document and so say, do this. But most of the time, it's more like you, you go on a machine and try to understand what's happening and then investigate how you can fix it. And that's where it's difficult to document. Um, well, I'm not talking about documenting how to fix that. Uh, rather documenting where the gaps in terms of ownership and access okay. because yeah documentation and run books is definitely important uh, but uh, first step would be to understand uh, where we miss people and uh, after that we can probably see what we could do for example me and mark could uh, dedicate some time to study this area uh, maybe do some knowledge transfers with you record or not uh, create run books uh, but uh, yeah, first item for us would be to understand what are these areas. Okay. So, and to use, could the idea of using the run books as a first, which which of the run books are already hot or, or a topic related to the run book is hot or is low coverage to use Oleg's idea. I like that idea a bunch, Oleg. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, personally, I really like, I really like the idea that the, the way you said the ownership gap. Um, the idea is mm -hmm. really to identify what are the things that um, I'm the only one. So a small example is the Amazon account that we are running at the moment. Um, for, for, I mean, for, for some reason, we can only have CloudBees employees. This is something that you have to fix. This is something, this is an account that needs to be transferred to the, to the community. But for now, the gap is if you're not a CloudBees employee, you don't have access to the logs. So this is definitely a place where, for example, Mark and Oleg could help, where, for example, CLJNKs.io does not, I mean, this is the only, the only thing. Um, CLJNKs.io, for example, uh, we could have more people. The Azure account is the same. We could have more people. Um, so typically, for the case uh, of the, the Azure account, I was maybe thinking to to add Tim Tim Jacob uh, on that part because he has enough mm -hmm. knowledge on Azure to to not break things. Um, but so yeah, I really like the idea that the ideas of uh, of having people on the, with specific ownership on specific um, areas. So I try yeah. to, to I try to I try to 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 give a list and, and send that on the line from any list. Mm -hmm. Any other topic that you want to? Yeah, I put some topics uh, to the list. Uh, it's uh, they just in the prop suggest the changes section above. Uh, identify ownership gap. Somebody added. Um, Checking score. Uh, so yeah, regarding the um, approving custom out app. There is something that I would like to do is to, is to uh, enable the, um, and the GitHub accounts. Um, uh, I would like to restrict third parties access, and I don't. And I'm not sure if it will impact uh, the custom auth app. So, um, yeah. So in my case, I rather worry specifically about Jenkins CI GitHub organization, okay. and about uh, our use cases core change log generation. Because uh, the current situation is that if you open uh, Jenkins CI Jenkins uh, releases, you can see that uh, GitHub Actions uh, is listed as an account which cut the release. And I would like to fix that. I already prototyped a fix, uh, which basically replaces uh, the GitHub app uh, by another OAuth app. I can do that. There is no problem with REST API limit, etc. But I need uh, approval or whatever sign off from other infra team members to do that uh, because uh, there may be concerns uh, I didn't consider so far. So I just have a question. Um, would it yeah. be easier to, to run um, the release drafter from Jenkins? So is it something that could be possible? Uh, well, technically it's uh, possible. Uh, practically, it's not only about uh, release drafter. Uh, but, uh, right now we use GitHub Actions and we chain uh, several actions in order to generate change logs. And uh, this is the current implementation. Obviously, we could uh, move everything to Jenkins, but uh, firstly, it would create additional uh, REST API consumption. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, in the current state, I would rather prefer to avoid that. Okay. But if uh, there is a strong requirement to run uh, change log generation from Jenkins, of course, we can do that. Uh, 
Um, so, yeah, you know, anyways, um, in terms of permission on Jenkins here organization, you probably have to contact Daniel for this because I don't have the keys there. I have so, everything I need uh, to send, uh, to configure the organization. I just need to sign off from right for team that uh, there is no problem with it. I, I think I think Olivier, what Oleg Oleg is looking for is agreement. I agree. Yes, you should. Yeah. Do, you are authorized to do it, Oleg. That, I think yeah, I think I, um, yeah. I think I already replied to that to that in the in the, in the email. So for me, it's, no, no, you you didn't. That's why I edited this. Yeah, so, maybe, so maybe my email was not sent, but yeah, for me, I thought that I, that I'd already, uh, I thought that oh. I already replied to this. Yeah, you just, I was wrong. Uh, you said uh, that uh, you need to update templates. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I forgot about this message, but it just didn't seem as uh, yes or no regarding the all of up. No, for, 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 for me, for me, it's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can go ahead. Okay. Mm, uh, so I will just implement that. And so there is, a, uh, yeah, there is one. Um, there is another point that you, you, that you ask. Okay. There is another, so yeah, on the out, it's totally fine. Um, the other day on the um, RC, you also asked if it was possible to enable um, GitHub issues for Jenkins Infra um github repository so the puppet repository and yeah mm -hmm. i just something i mean I, I don't have strong opinions about using github issues it's just that i don't want to have to i mean i does not like the idea to have multiple tools um the to, to i mean to switch because it i mean it makes it more difficult to to generate reports it makes it more difficult to find the right information and it's not yeah so yeah the, to, uh, so the thing is i have there is that discussion about using Jira, get, get, getting rid of Jira or whatever, um, or fixing Jira, but this is something that we still have to work on. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So if we don't want to use two trackers, so the main problem is with issue migration. It's possible to migrate issues to GitHub, but sometimes it's just an overhead. And uh, practically what I've seen in other repositories, once you enable GitHub issues, uh, the traffic uh, to Jenkins Jira basically vanishes. So it would be an archive for historical issues, but I wouldn't expect too, my, too many activities there. Thank you. So I'm not really concerned uh, about a duplication, especially if we say that, uh, okay, now GitHub issues is a source of truth for new issues. No, yeah, but my, my point about duplication was more, for example, okay, you have uh, you have GitHub issues for the Puppet repository, but not for the VPN, for the Docker image and stuff like this. And on the infra, we have a lot of repositories. So my point was more either we enable for all the infra work or we don't because I don't want to have, when I start working or when I start to look at this, I don't want to have to open two, 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 mm -hmm. two, two, two tools and I don't want to keep track of the two tools. It's already difficult enough to follow all the notification and I'll follow all the things that are happening. Yeah. So. Yeah, so for me, it's uh, quite straightforward. If uh, it's a user facing repository where we can facilitate contributions or feedback by using GitHub issues, uh, it, uh, there I would be in favor of using uh, GitHub issues. For repositories which are uh, backend uh, and which are not really visible to users, I don't care. Uh, I'm uh, fine with using Jenkins Jira. But, but I, I like the, the statement that you said, do not care, because that means we could switch on Jira issues for all of Jenkins Infra, as suggested by Olivier, and not, not violate the constraint you gave, Oleg. And I, I am all for turning on GitHub issues. The experience with Jenkins.io for GitHub issues has been positive. I think it's been very good. And I think we would benefit by turning on, by enabling GitHub issues. Yeah. So as long as we don't have to migrate out of GitHub, it's good. And migrating yeah. out of GitHub uh, would be so big issue that, uh, yeah. But yeah, my, I don't, th I mean, I don't think we need, um, I mean, I, mean I, I don't really care about migrating all the issues from, from Jira to, to GitHub because um, if it's really an issues that, that come back, then we can just reopen the issues and just put a link to the, to the one from Jira and that's fine. Yeah. And anyway, we, we, have a lot, we have a lot of old issues that are not relevant anymore because 
infra evolve and the project evolve and so on. So just in different ways to, to start from zero. Um, but yeah, for, for me, just like, <clears throat> except that for security work, everything is public anyway. So uh, I'm, I'm, pers I'm fine to use GitHub issues. It's just that it's a different workflow. And uh, it's something that I try to think about. Mm -hmm. So with regard to GitHub issues, I, I gather that we're not settled on a decision yet, but it's an open topic. Do we have... Mm -hmm. To me, to me, have... for me, for me, it's an open. It's still an open topic. Um, okay. Yeah, for me, it's still an open topic. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure yet, but I mean, there are so many people that are still strongly in favor of Jira that I don't want to 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 force a move uh, in either ways. Because, for example, let's say that I know that Daniel rely a lot on Jira, and because he created this is for the same reason um, than me, he created dashboard. And so, if we decide to switch everything to to GitHub issues, we just um, to re-implement some work that we did um, for the project. Um, so, for example, in the case of Jira, yes, I have dashboard to say who's working on what, what are the most uh, critical components that we that we have and things like that. So it's a way for me to say, okay, I spend a lot of time on Seattle Jenkins.io instead of Trusted or whatever things. And so if I decide to switch everything to GitHub issues, then yeah, I have to also change this, which is not a big deal, but yeah, it means also some work and changing my process. So... So yeah, for me it's still an open, but I mean, uh, I would like to have that discussion because we need, we need, we we have to find a solution before September, October, or November. I don't, I don't remember, but there is a deadline for Jira because the current state is Jira need to be upgraded. Uh, we need to work on the database, um, and so yeah, just to remind the current state, um, Jira is using a deprecated um, MySQL or PostgreSQL version, and so the new ver the new Jira version do not support the database that we have. So we have to upgrade the database, we have to update the collection on the database. So there is some work with the Jira. Then you have to upgrade Jira, um, and so this will require some work. And if we do don't do that before November, we won't have fixes for new vulnerability and I mean we know that Jira is a popular target instance so we already saw in the past that yeah, we need we, we try to, we need to be uh, up to, um, as much as possible uh, um, updated so anyway that's another different topics but yeah we, we have we have to keep this discussion open okay mm -hmm. yeah uh, specifically I have questions about um, update center uh, because currently we have issues with uh, a plugin side. Uh, so plugin side itself uses GitHub issues right now. Okay. But update center, which is in many means a part of the update side, uh, uses Jenkins Jira and it complicates the things. And it's a public facing repository. So for example, if a plugin maintainer wants to blacklist a plugin or something like that, now they have to use Jenkins Jira infra project. Uh, but uh, moving the request management the, to GitHub uh, would be reasonable. So who is the, who is the person who solved most of the issues really related to the data center? It depends. Uh, security, mostly Daniel and Vadek nowadays, uh, regarding the rest, whomever handles them. So my guess would be to convince this, my guess would be to convince them to switch to GitHub issues. Mm -hmm. So personally, I, I don't spend a lot of time. Uh, I, I mean, this is not a project that I'm tracking. So for me, switching that project to GitHub issues is fine. Um, but yeah, you have to convince that again for that. Yeah. Another similar topic is uh, redirects for Wiki. Because yeah, right now, redirects for Wiki, they are managed in Jenkins Jira. And I believe we are not open to open on GitHub issues in Jenkins Infra slash Jenkins right now. Mm -hmm. So you want you want to use GitHub issues and that's why you wanted to to, to enable GitHub issues and Jenkins Infra slash Jenkins Infra. I have I want to enable it in uh, some particular repositories. I don't want to enable it globally. Uh, I believe that it's up to maintainers of particular components. 
but yeah, I'm just exploring some components where we potentially have uh, problems or where we can potentially get benefits uh, from using GitHub issues. Um, because typically, typically enabling GitHub issues just for this, that's what I mean by um, some issues will be reported in Jenkins Jira and others not, and that's why I'm not really in favor of doing, of enabling it. But yeah, if 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 other people think that I'm wrong, I mean I'm totally fine to to enable it. Just that this is my concern. Um, mm -hmm. This 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 project is not only used for uh, plugin for wiki redirect rules. Yeah, that's right. So in uh, the case of wiki redirects, uh, I understand that it's unlikely that we enable GitHub issues there. Uh, for me, it's just a potential problem, uh, but uh, I think that our guidelines will just uh, require submitting a pull request. It's easier than submitting can uh, because. In yeah. Do do, you, do we do we really have a lot of contributors that do not have a Jenkins account? I believe that everyone who contributes seriously has a Jenkins account. So, so you can write a blog post and other stuff without it, but in principle, you can create it in a few minutes. Because no. it's quick, it's it's quick to create. You have an access, and I just, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't think the I don't think the concern actually is about account access. It's rather that, at least for me, GitHub issues are attractive because they're much closer to and very precise to the component that I'm that I'm I'm doing work on. But that that admittedly does sacrifice many of the benefits we get from Jira. So I, I don't think Oleg, you're proposing a global switch. Rather, one repository at a time, and only when that repository makes sense and its contributors agree that it makes sense. Uh, exactly. Okay. So the, the, the specific when you were, I, I wonder, do we need a process by which we say, who are the contributors to this repository and how do we get them to unify that we're okay switching this one? I, I took the preemptive choice to switch Jenkins.io to use GitHub issues. I enabled it because I happen to be an administrator and I, I didn't consult anybody, I just did it. The danger, of course, is that now we could get bug reports in both places. I accepted that danger as very much worth it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plus, and plus one with regards to that. And we can uh, move uh, the entire website project uh, to GitHub issues if somebody has time to do that. So maybe, Mark, if you're interested uh, to experiment with issue migration, you have a playground for that. Yeah, which I'm, I'm actually not. I don't, I will, I will happily work to close out the issues on Jira that are there and accept new issues as part of the transition. I don't feel any need to have a single repository mm -hmm. for that particular project. Now there are others. I'm unwilling to enable GitHub issues on the Git plugin because there are yeah. 500 issues in Jira that I can, I will not move. Right. So, so it's, it's just different. Yeah. It, for me, it's per repository is where it, the decision is. Yeah, right. So I think we are running in circles a bit. So okay. yeah, definitely it's an open topic. Uh, it's not something we are going to decide today. Yeah, anyway, because yeah, we we still have to think about it. So yeah, I propose that we stop the meeting here. We are already over time. So thank for, thanks for participating in the meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, see you, see you later on our CEO waiver. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.